Hello again. Welcome back to Bizarre Brain Comics, Volume 3. Okay. Today, I want to, what I'm going to talk with you about this book here. This, famous first editions, big tabloid sized comic of Wiz Comics. And the first appearance of Captain Marvel, also known as Shazam. This is uh, issue, actually numbered issue two, but it was the very first appearance and, and the very first issue of Wiz Comics. I'll tell you about that, about that in a little bit. Okay. The reason it was it was uh, Wiz Comics number two is because... Uh, while they were still, <clears throat> um, before actual production, they had published a small uh, um, a digest sized, what they called an ash can. It was just for, um, just for, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for copyright reasons. And that one was, was titled Flash Comics, number one. They had to change, before it went into production, they had to change the name. And the character was not Captain Marvel, but Captain Thunder. And before it went into production, they it had gone through changes of Captain Marvelous, to just Captain Marvel. Now, this was book was published and uh, was February 1940. It was in 1939, the Fawcett Publications decided they wanted to get into the comics in, uh, industry. Before that, they were just uh, um, producing magazines, I guess primarily uh, humor magazines from what I understand. And they got um, two of their people together, a writer by the name of Bill Parker and a gag cartoon cartoonist uh, who was being published in their in their humor magazines named C.C. Beck and had them get together and to create a character to, ca uh, to cash in on the uh, the sudden booming of of the Mr. Mystery Men genre. Then it was called Mystery Men. Today we call them superheroes. And they did their brainstorming and came up with Captain Marvel. Now, well, let's just get into it and then we'll, then we'll talk. Yep. Famous first editions from DC Comics. This one was published or printed in 1974. And like I said before, re reprinting the, in the entire issue of Wiz Comics number two. It doesn't actually give a give a uh, an issue number here on the cover. Now you have to take a look at that at that cover art. Of course, Captain Marvel and they were really, really co uh, copying Superman quite a bit and trying to make him make it distinctive enough from that character. But even here on the on the on the front cover has an image that is reminiscent, although not as iconic, as that first image of Superman on the on the uh, cover of Action Comics number one. Maybe Captain Marvel. Throw, uh, Throwing the car, not as iconic. Okay, this is Ca uh, okay, Captain Marvel, who is comics number one. Nice Captain figure, nice figures there. This is now splash panel, doesn't really show you much as far as Sora is concerned, just the introduction to the character. And then here, a few, uh, few panels. Beginning of the story. Now I notice here the panels. Each pa panels are 
panel is a little bit larger than some of the others. You see here, the main character stand, stands out with bright colors amongst all this sh shadow, all the all this solid black. Nice and placed solid black brings that figure forward. Same thing here. Then here you have the character Billy against the back uh, white background, and that brings this dark figure forward to the foreground. Nice way of leading the eye. So you have Billy Batson. We don't know he's Billy Batson yet. Selling newspapers on a rainy day in front of a subway. Here this guy says, says why aren't you in bed and then follow me? Now that sounds pretty suspicious to me, but for some reason, of course this is in the 40s, 30s and 40s. You never can tell. So he's a pretty shady looking character. We don't know who he is, what he looks like. But Billy follows him. Right down the tunnel. What are you waiting for? And then this, uh, all of a sudden, this amazing fantasy looking, fantastical subway car pulls up and it gets in. All, all the weird, magical reminiscence uh, uh, designs here on the side of that. And here inside the car, all these weird hieroglyphs and stuff. Now, Billy, he looks very, very simple. I mean, the uh, the artwork is really very simple, very much, a, very cartoonish. And here, we're telling the story. It's no longer in a subway tunnel, but it's become some kind of cave. He doesn't know what's going on, and the man leads Billy deeper into the camp and cavern. And here the passes by, it calls it, says here, the seven deadly enemies of man. They're what, uh, <clears throat> what is known as the, uh, the seven deadly sins. I don't know why he changed it to enemies, but as well. And they are pride, envy, greed, hatred, selfishness, laziness, and injustice. All these horrific looking figures, statues. Now, in contrast to what we saw with uh, uh, the Superman story before, the general draftsmanship and storytelling is much cl cleaner and clearer here. And more, while still simple, more detail to the backgrounds. It's a brilliant and some nice clean art. Here Billy is uh, uh, brought before this giant marble throne with this ancient, ancient figure. We discover is it, well, welcome Billy, Billy Batson. Now, how, this is when we're actually, when we first find Billy's, discover Billy's name. And it, also in this context, we've, we've, well, we'll discover more. There's Billy. Now you can really contrast this here. Very cartoonish looking Billy Batson. And then you come down here to the old man. Very nice, detailed figure. Still some simple line work. It's a nice, clean line work. It's a simple line work. He's the... Pretty much the, the artistic image one might have for for God, from some of the old old imagery of God. So, he says his name, Shazam, and get this magical uh, lightning crash. Flash of lightning. Shazam! And then we find out what Shazam means. Shazam, the name Shazam is taken from the S for Solomon, for wisdom, H, Hercules for strength, A, Atlas for stamina, Z, Zeus for power, A, Achilles, courage, and M, Mercury for speed. Now here we have something here. We have this, the caption below at the bottom of the panel. When it really... For for um, to to clarify the reading of the, of the whole image, it should be placed up up top, or maybe side side. There's no dialogue, so it doesn't interfere with that. 
And he tells the story of how he's, how the old wizard Shazam tells him how for 3,000 years he has fought injustice and used all the powers granted him by these gods. Now, it's, it's a, a mixed bag for, uh, for, um, Uh, 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 pantheons. Of course, Zeus isn't a god. Uh, correction. Solomon isn't a god at all. And the rest are from Greek, uh, Greek or Roman uh, uh, pantheon. Of course, Achilles isn't a god either. He's, he was a hero. He was courage, but probably uh, maybe also get him for invulnerability. So 3,000 years. And then here he shows he's but uh, that he's been watching Billy his whole life and shows him here the image of when after his parents died so we find out that Billy is an orphan and he had a rich uncle who kicked the kid out when he was a uh, when he was younger so that he could get control of his family's wealth and here he is and there's his evil uncle and so he wants Billy to become the uh, great hero. Here's the this uh, that we had a, some foreshadowing for here in this other image back here. When we first see the wizard Shazam, we have this big old block suspended by a thread. Here you can't tell it's suspended by a thread, hanging directly over over the the old man. Here we see it again, and the lion holding it is getting thin. <laughs> So he tells Billy, he wants him to become, he said, uh, you become the strongest and mightiest man in the world. And the tagline they come up with later is world's mightiest mortal. Become Captain Marvel and speak my name. So he does. He says his name Shazam. Nice big bold image of uh, uh, Thundercloud and, and Lightning Strike. And Billy is transformed into Captain Marvel. Is a nice figure. Real, real nice image there. Nice and clean. While while detailed, it's still it's simplified. I think I like this the costume. I especially like this with the uh, the flap on the chest. It was, uh, not only lasts a few issues, and then until eventually it's it's just the standard superhero form fitting costume. Still has the uh, the lightning bolt, but no flap and no, uh, uh, and the form fitting on on his shoulders and sleeves. I like these kind. Of, I like this uniform better. It, it's reminiscent of uh, a military uniform with, with the cape and, and all this. Uh, more reminiscent of of an older style military uniform, which goes along with the name Captain, right? And uh, CC Beck, the artist. Now that, remember, this is this kind of comic work is is relatively new to this guy. He was a gag cartoonist, and so his art, artwork all th all through the the run is uh, cartoonish and, and gets slightly cartoonish anyway, and gets more so. But here he modeled the character after the actor Fred McMurray. He was then a, a popular actor. And he was still still young and good looking at that time. Um, he today Fred McMurray, if if anyone even remembers him, he's best known as the father from My Three Sons on TV. So here, he, say, he says, Captain Marvel, I salute you, and have your sacred duty to help the poor, the helpless, right wrongs, and crush evil. Yes, yes, sir. He does. Then here he tells him to. To change, he can change back by again saying his name, and when he does, Shazam! The lightning strikes, and at the same time, you can see here, it's still fairly fairly clear, and you can have some good, uh, uh, at least decent um, visual storytelling. You can see the block falling on the old wizard, and suddenly he's transported back in front of the the um, the subway. So he may not know. Again. Here's the, a caption down here at the bottom, but the, the cap, caption should probably be up here 
so that as you read it, you go right into the artwork instead of the artwork going into the caption. <clears throat> so here he is next morning, and Andy's uh, selling newspapers again. That's what he does. And what's on this? What's on the headlines? Maniac scientist threatens U.S. radio system, demands $50 million. <laughs> yeah. Police are searching vainly for a phantom scientist, blah, blah, blah. Now, here's this little plot device. These two tough-looking guys come up and buy a paper from, from Billy. Happens to, happens to say, I want to read about the boss, huh? I said, shut up, you fool. Let's get going. So, again, the caption down here should have been up here. For, from, to clarify uh, how the story goes. Again, it's a plot device because all of the, the uh, newsboys in all of whatever city it is, and they happen... To, uh, to come and buy a newspaper from Billy Batson, the only person who has a chance of doing something about it. Simple plot device. Now they're walking off, so Billy says, oh, he's got to do something. So he, tra he trails it too wide. Now here's, this is, a, this is a really nice, really nice image here, this building. Billy, and here you can see in the back, you can see the guys going up the stairs. Nice detail, detailed work. Much, much better. I mean, it, it's not not cluttered, nice and clean. Some sol some solid blacks. Notice the black around here to really direct your eye right to those guys going through the doorway. That's a, that's a nice panel there. Billy tries to get in, and the doorman won't let him in. Huh. Notice his uniform is rem <laughs> is somewhat reminiscent of Captain Marvel's. Same colors. Got the bands down there. No, no brushes, but reminiscent. And that's a really, real nice figure. And even he looks kind of like a thug. So, he decides to go to the radio station. They don't tell you in here, but this is Wiz Comics. And the radio station he goes to is Wiz Radio. W-H-I-Z, Wiz Radio. Goes to see Sterling Morris. Who is uh, the president of the the radio station? The uh, secretary tries to stop him, and Billy sl uh, slips by. Oh. Fairly good. Good, nice background. Simple, not too distracting, but tells you the information you need. He says to let the let the kid in. Okay, Mr. Morris and Billy excitedly tells him the story again. The panel, uh, the, the the caption to enhance the artwork, enhance what what you're seeing in the artwork should be at the top of the panel, and here they put it at the bottom. There's Mr. Morris. Simple. But nice figure. Nice good distinction on these figures, on these characters. They all all look very distinct. And Mr. Morris doesn't believe him. Billy says, okay, but if I uh, but I find out, will you give me a job? Now this is reminiscent of that Superman story uh, from before, where Clark tries to get a job at the newspaper. They won't give it to him unless he can get, get the story, which happens to be about Superman. So he gets the story, so he'll get the story. So the kid goes back that night. There he is, wanting to see how he's going to get in, into, that, uh, into that building. So he goes up to the top of the other building. A neighboring building next door and says the magic word Shazam and boom there he is again transformed into Captain Marvel good nice clean figure and he leaps from one one building to the other because like Superman at this time he could not fly 
In fact, I don't know how Billy knew what he could do as Captain Marvel because the, uh, the old wizard didn't tell him. I guess he has to find out on his own. So he leaps over to the penthouse of the other building. Peeking in the window. Sees the bad guys huddling in front of a, and they're in uh, in front of a big TV screen. It's and it's getting close to midnight when he's gonna wipe out the radio because they didn't pay him his money. Nice, nice panel, nice details. Again, not too cluttered. Got a nice figure here, nice figure here. You recognize these two from uh, that pre previous panel when they were buying the newspaper. But it's enough. To tell you it's some kind of uh, electronic machine gadget here and on that TV screen is revealed the evil Dr. Savannah I notice here that Dr. Savannah here there's a striking resemblance to Billy's evil uncle in this other image but they're not the same uh, in a Decades later, in another re reboot, they do make the, make the two the same character. But there's a striking resemblance. Now, like I said, the Captain Marvel image of Captain Marvel was based on the actor Fred McMurray. Now, from what I understand, the image of this evil Dr. Savannah was based on a pharmacist in the neighborhood where C.C. Beck lived. <laughs> That's too bad. And we don't ever see, don't hear see much of Doctor Savannah. Doctor Savannah eventually becomes Captain Marvel's major villain. Here he is, just seconds away, about to to knock their, all the radio stations off the air and crash. In comes Captain Marvel, crashing through the window. Marvel races towards the diabolical machine and smashes it by by throwing the, the thugs into the machinery. And this is a for here they put the the caption at the top. Which is good, and you get some good good imagery, uh, good good fairly good storytelling here in, in this panel. You see, from here, you see the hero, and you see what he's done, throwing the guy into the machines. You can see all the machinery. Some nice detail, not too cluttered cluttered up. Some nice blacks to really lead your eye from right here, right through the background, past that figure into the blacks here, with the emphasis. On that collision. That's a nice composition. Nice detail. And the other guy takes off. Gets in the uh, elevator. And Captain Marvel rips the elevator. That's a real nice figure. Nice figure there. And here too. Pulls the ele elevator car up and knocks the guy out. How did he know that he would be able to do that? Don't know. I don't know. And here they are. Have, have them all trapped. But Savannah's still on TV. So he doesn't get, get him. I'll get you and your little dog too. <laughs> but not the end uh, of me. We will meet again, Captain Marvel. Yep, yep, yep. And when we do, you will be behind prison prison walls or dead. Now that's kind of grim right there. Kind of grim. And then he smashes the TV. Everything's all wrapped up. Shazam turns back into Billy. Kaboom calls doc uh, um mr morris he comes over sees that how he smashed it smashed it all up doesn't want anybody to uh to know about captain marvel at this point so he doesn't tell him anything about captain marvel and reminds him that he told him he'd give him a job so okay you can have a job there he is yep all right now there's and here's the end just to be have more stand by for more captain marvel now the storytelling is nice, relatively simple, but nice, nice and clean, and the, at, with a, a simple but clear plot going on here. And use some plot devices, and the story isn't isn't terribly long, but it works. Uh, and this issue has several stories because Wiz Comics was originally a an anthology comic. See back here has others like the, uh, Ibis, the Invincible, 
Oh, who else? This is nice, nice artwork in there. Um, that's still Ibis. Um, here we got uh, uh, a Western story, uh, Golden Arrow, I think is what it's called. That's got some nice artwork there. Here's some more. Um, this one's the one. Oh, that's a uh, Spice Masher. Is it's more uh, simpler art, but uh, still some nice stuff. And here, yeah, it's, these are some really nice figures in some of these panels. Like that, and that's a real nice. And I forgot, this is what, Dan Dare, I think. Yeah. But we're just talking about Captain Marvel. But I was just wanted to show that for the contrast of characters and and artwork. Now remember, he was a cartoonist. And even though it's pretty realistic, naturalistic, I guess, in his art style, it's still stylized and cartoonish. And as he matured in his artwork, CC Beck, you can really see in some of these here. Yeah, this is some real nice ones. There's Dr. Savannah again. And his, his work got stronger, bolder, but it's still thoroughly stylized, still cartoonish. When I was a kid, that was a big turnoff to me back in the 70s. But I still read the comics because I liked them. But I like at that point I liked the uh, less stylized, more photorealistic. This is this is um, Beck had had a real nice style. Nice, and the plot worked. And you saw, and you, as you saw in this, just a, it was just a few issues into into the run that. He lost the lost the flap and became became this image of Captain Marvel. Okay. This doesn't want to stay there. Okay. As I was saying. Okay, now. The, the publisher, Fawcett Publishing, as I said before, was uh, had been doing humor magazines when they got into the comics. Now, one of their most popular magazines was called, I've never seen it, so I don't know what just what it was about, was called Captain Billy's Whizbang. Now, you can see, you might be able to see there, how that carried on into their comics. Had the name Captain, Captain Marvel, Captain Billy, Billy Batson, Wiz, Wiz Bang, <laughs> was the title of uh, the the title of, of the, the comic, Wiz Comics, as well as later the uh, the radio station, and Bang is when you get the magic lightning. Okay, now now Fawcett published. Captain Marvel comics became a whole line, a whole family. You had Billy, uh, uh, Captain Marvel Jr., Mary Marvel. Um, there were a bunch of other characters who were also named Billy Batson who could who could uh, with work with Billy, and they got powers too. Just went, they were like a reserve unit when he needed them. And then there was silly old Uncle Dudley, who <laughs> wore a Captain Marvel costume. And said Shazam, and nothing happened because he had no no powers at all. But he just hung out. He was comic relief, and it was already kind of silly. Um, and the, and they had a whole whole line. They had issues of Marvel Family, Captain Marvel, and Captain Marvel Junior had had his own own title as well. So there were a variety of of artists too. But they mostly carried on the uh, the C in the C C Beck line of vein of artwork and that was published until 1953 by then uh, now captain marvel did very well in the 40s captain marvel sold better than superman and but uh and that rank kind of rankled dc comics which is then national 
and they sued. They had lawsuits for uh, copyright inf infringement, and they kept suing and suing and suing for years. Until 1953, the popularity of superheroes was waning, so Fawcett decided it was just just cheaper to uh, to cut their losses and stopped publication. So in, in that those regards, DC won, and uh, they just kind of stopped fighting, and they went out went out of uh, went out of print, went out of publication. And I don't know what what if anything Fawcett published after that. And then in the in the nineteen seventies, just 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 over twenty years later, DC Comics bought the rights to Captain Marvel. And in nineteen seventy four, start correction, as Shazam Comics nine, number one, nineteen seventy three, they started republishing Captain Marvel. Of course, there their the title was Shazam. Um, there are reasons for that. And in, in that, they just picked up, basically picked up where they left off. They come up with an excuse for why uh, Billy and all of his uh, all of his cast had been gone for 20 years. And they came back and just picked up right where they left off with C.C. Beck being their primary artist for several years after that. And, oh... Oh yeah, Shazam, and one of the, the the reasons why they titled their book Shazam instead of Captain Marvel was because in the interim, back in the, in the sixties, Marvel Comics, when they got the chance, they got copyright on the name Captain Marvel. Now that at that time that worked that was just for a title. They had their own title uh, called Captain Marvel for their character. Captain Marvel, who wasn't nearly as, as interesting and good as this and at that time. And, but DC had the rights that were able to use the name Captain Marvel within the comics, but the title had to be something different. So they used Shazam. So the name Shazam got so so associated with, with uh, Captain Marvel that people eventually just, especially during... During this, this later in the seventies, when they had the uh, live action TV series of Shazam, people just started calling him Shazam. Until eventually, uh, again after after several lawsuits, DC decided we'll just drop Captain Marvel entirely and go with the name Shazam. So now that's why when you have have that new uh, uh, live action movie that came out uh, just a couple years ago, they called him Shazam. No mention of Captain Marvel whatsoever. And that kind of pretty much brings us up to date. I want, just wanted to talk about uh, the story, um, the artwork, and C.C. Beck, primarily C.C. Beck. They had, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention, I did want to tell you that, that after, after a few issues, um, the original writer left, and they got on the, the writer Otto Binder. And he... Played more for humor, adventure humor, uh, playing directly to the strengths for for uh, a young child audience, and it worked. It was a combination that worked, and it's and it's why the character was remembered because you saw in that first story uh, there wasn't really any humor to it. It was a short, very short story, not much opportunity for humor, and it worked. People loved it. I got a kick out of it. Thanks for joining me. And I want to invite you all to uh, subscribe and share. I need all the, all the viewers I can get. I appreciate it. And remember, comics are culture. <laughs>